Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. Fuck them shoes. Fuck those socks with the bell on it. Fuck your gay ass fairy faggot accent. Fuck them cheap ass cigars. Fuck your yuck mouth teeth. Fuck your hair piece. Fuck your chocolate. Fuck Guy Ritchie. Fuck Prince William. Fuck the Queen. This is America, but my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. Fuck them shoes. Fuck those socks with the bell on it. Fuck your gay ass fairy faggot accent. Fuck them cheap ass cigars. Fuck your yuck mouth teeth. Fuck your hair piece. Fuck your chocolate. Fuck Guy Ritchie. Fuck Prince William. Fuck the Queen. This is America, but my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. What's up, beautiful people? Now. I wanted to do a video. I'm going to be completely honest in this video about some things that you may not believe and about things that the U.S. government doesn't want you to know. Now, I'm going to start off with something that we're all familiar with, which is Stargate. Now, if you know the story of Stargate, the show, not the government program that has to do with, um, they say, remote viewing, which was actually the start of the first Stargate. That Stargate plan or program got canceled in 84 because the real Stargate went online. Now, this is the stuff that the government is so afraid of me and Laurel Aston speaking about, and this is why DARPA and Project Montauk and the U.S. government is spending millions and millions of dollars to keep me from talking about this. Now, I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you is very real, very serious, and it involves us all. I was really kind of not wanting to do a video about this because I'm still fighting it, but it's getting to the point where they are getting weak and it's just getting annoying. So if you remember the story of Stargate and the Guau, the parasites, that basically jump out of nowhere and get into your stomach and all of a sudden you're being controlled by this worm-like parasite. People, that's very real. It wasn't just a TV show. They put it on TV in case people like me, in case people that were part of the Project Montauk program and part of the Stargate program were no longer under mind control and decided to talk or talk in a hospital and to a doctor or something and then it would be easy for that doctor to just say, oh, you've been watching too much TV. Well, this isn't TV, people. This is very real and I'm going to explain to you about the Gua'ul and the evolution of the Sith. Now, I want you to understand that, first of all, off-world travel is very real. Second of all, the U.S. government and the Nazi government have gone off-world and turned these off-worlds with really peaceful, beautiful species into worlds of prostitution and experimentation. I mean, to a horrific nature, people. I'm not kidding. I visited a few when I was in Paris, and some of the worlds that I visited were humanoid. They were human-like, and they looked human, but they spoke our language a bit different. That's how I could tell I wasn't they weren't from the same planet as me. Um, but I want you to understand one major thing that the U.S. government with the Rothschilds did. 
First of all, let me explain to you about Nikola Tesla. Because this all really starts with him and his knowledge and how the Sith are after the most intelligent minds in the universe. That is their goal. Intelligence. Now, I want you to understand that Nikola Tesla first built the first time machine on Earth. It was during the Philadelphia Project when the U.S. government asked him to make the first stealth ship. That is a ship that is invisible to radar or detection. Nikola Tesla told the U.S. government when he was working on it that he needed another six months to a year to finish. And they said, no way, we need it in, in a few months. And he said, there's no way. So the U.S. government said, if you can't do it, we'll find somebody else that can. And so Nikola Tesla said, find somebody else. And he left his work. What he had already done was the ground floor basis for a time machine. He left that work with the U.S. government and then the U.S. government brought in the scientists who were in charge of studying Nazi technology and basically you have the Philadelphia experiment which opened a jump room or a wormhole, a loop, so you would say a time loop that if it, if it remained open, it would have ripped the earth apart because of what the Nazis had done in between 1948 and 1984. This was the first jump loop that the Nazis established with Nikola Tesla's time machine. Now, I want you to understand how time works, people. We're talking about the first time travel on earth when they started going back and forth to 1984 and 1948 and the things that they started doing. Now, I'm going to tell you what they did because they don't want you to know. First of all, they started having sexual relations back and forth. Do you know what that does to time? If you take someone from 1948 and impregnate a woman in 1984, that baby is a huge paradox and has the ability to rip apart time because it should not exist. This is time travel and this is what the US government has been playing with like it's, it's their football game. But their football is their penis. Let's be honest. So that's the number one thing that they did. Number two is they started sending messages back and forth to each other in the future and the past. That's another paradox. Number three, they started sending scientists back to 1948 to start working on science there and to stay in 1948. And so then by the time 1984 came along and they met up with another counterpart because they wouldn't exist in 1984 if they went back to 1948. So they had to plan and calculate on these things and they thought they got very good at it. But the fact of the matter is they started so many paradoxes within just these two years. 1948 and 1984. So then, all this technology sprung up between these times, and so we're dealing with, also we're dealing with Nazis people. And so then the Nazis figured out how to change time and go back and do things the way they wanted things. Now, I know you're wondering... Okay, so if that's true, why didn't the Nazis just, you know, take over during the war? Because the Nazis saw how much power they had in 1984. 
because they were in U.S. government bases. They were completely isolated and in secret and protected by the U.S. government, which with this knowledge, they would take over. Bottom line. So this is why Project Montauk, which I was a victim of as a child assassin, they killed my father. They took me as a child and started programming me and sending me through time to do operations for them. And I was one of the best at doing them. So I want you to understand why they just didn't, you know, go ahead and say, okay, we won the war. Because if they had won the war and changed time like that, they would have never gone into Mexico. They would have never gone into the United States. They would have never learned about um, the time jump window in 1984 to 1948 that Nikola Tesla did, which they advanced on and which they started taking messages back to themselves in the past and even taking technology back to themselves in the past. This is why they were able to build the ships that they built called the Nazi Bell. They were using future technology given to them, fed to them by themselves from the future. Now you understand how the Nazis, you know, have so much technology and the U.S. government has so much technology and how they're more advanced than anyone can possibly ever fathom is because they've been time jumping and giving themselves technology, say, from 2014, and then they go back from 2014 to, say, 1948, and then have a secret base where they're working. And then so then by the time 1948 gets back around to 2014, that technology has increased tenfold. See, I warned the government that I'm going to start talking about the stuff that they don't want me to talk about because... They've, they used a, a Mexican cartel to rip me off. They've caused me so many problems. And I'm going to make sure this is the most detrimental video to them because I want them to fuck off and die because they don't want me to have money. They don't want me to have a life. They don't want me to have kids. They don't want me to have anything. They just want me to sit here and let them fucking attack me with their fucking Siths all day long, and I'm sick of it. I'm really fucking sick of it. So I'm going to let people know what the fuck the U.S. government has been doing. I don't care if two people listen to it. I will post this video on the wall of the Kremlin because the Kremlin knows. The French Legion knows. They've been battling this shit forever. This is the secret war. This is what nobody wants to talk about. So now you understand how the Nazis and the U.S. government have gotten their jump in technology by time jumping. It's not that they're smart, okay? If, if I, which at one time and point did as a child have access to one of their ships which does have time traveling warp technology, and I were to go back, say, you know, a hundred years, and they also have de aging technology, so you don't age, because that's also the biggest problem with time travel aging. So then they have the de aging technology, so I'd go back a hundred years and then work for a hundred years. And, and really focus on my shit. And then the whole time, you know, I'm, I'm what, like a 14-year-old kid with the mind of a thousand Einsteins. 
So then I go back to the time where I came from and use a mental blocker or de-aging or there's so many things that you can use to block your memory so it doesn't coincide and rip apart the timeline where you're supposed to be at and continue to do the things that you need to do. But the fact of the matter is, this is what they do. This is what they've done. So I want you to understand that there is a entity called the Sith. I want you to know exactly what it is. See, I'm going to explain to you how brilliant the Nazis really are because they're actually really fucking stupid. And I mean, with technology and science because they created this. The Nazis created the Greys. Then the Greys took the Bell ships, the first Bell ships, that were a creation of future technology from the future Nazis in the United States brought back to the Nazis of the past. So I want you to understand that this is what they do. But still at the time, they didn't possess the technology to fly in these ships they possess the mathematics and the understanding of it. But they didn't possess the metals, the precious metals that would be developed later on. So within these ships had to be something that could withstand all of these G-forces and zero-point energy and that could control these mechanisms and that could understand how to fly vertical or left to right and how to fly basically in a vector. This is very complex math at that time. So what the Nazis did to compensate this, they created the greys. Now, I know you um, probably have heard about Nazis creating like these shark men the soldiers that could breathe underwater that they combine with shark DNA and so many other um, so-called super soldiers mixed with animal DNA. Well, this is a given that they would do this because the Nazis were very big alchemists. They worshiped the Baphomet and the Baphomet is, is an abomination. It's animal and human DNA mixed together which a abomination of such does not carry a soul. It only, only can carry a demon. And this is what the Nazis want. So I want you to understand exactly what they did. So they created a gray. The first gray that they created was a gray by the name of Satan. Satan, the gray, was the first one to fly one of their ships. They gave Satan a ship. So then Satan went through um, basically wormholes and developed its own technology. And remember, this was a creation of the Nazis. It was a demon walking on Earth made of Nazi DNA, specifically the real DNA, because they considered themselves the top scientists and occultists mixed with reptilian DNA because they worship snakes. They worship snakes because they worship the first murderer, Cain, which Cain was all about snake worship, Canaanites. And they knew this. So then Satan the Gray went and developed its own technology, then came back in a futuristic time 
when the Nazis were in the United States and made a treaty with the United States, which people know about the treaty, but they don't really know the real deal. The Nazis knew what it was and who it was, but they never talked about it because that's their boy, Satan. His goal, their goal, was to develop demonic entities so they could walk on earth once again. To develop a conduit, so to speak, for these demons to basically possess a shell and no longer human shells, but their own genetic abomination to where they can mix with human DNA and then to continue to spread their seed like the Nephilim started to. The Nephilim were the outcast of the Jelen. And the Jelen came down, they were the first to rape women and children to put their seed on the earth. And what did God do? God made it flood. And see, the homosexuals, these Nazis, choose to take the rainbow. You, you want to know why all these homosexuals always have the rainbow up? Well, the rainbow biblically represents this. It is a reminder to God that God promised to never make it flood on earth like God did to drown these demons walking on earth. That's what the rainbow represents. It doesn't represent homosexuality. Biblically speaking, this is what it represents. So these faggots took it, which are part of these Nazis, and they wave this rainbow flag around, but it's really a flag to God that you are not going to flush the earth again and drown us all. So, now you understand what exactly is going on. So let's move on to what the Nazis created next because the Greys, Satan, started getting out of control and kidnapping too many children. So the Nazis decided, okay, they needed to get Satan back under control because not only did it basically start doing what it just wanted to do and taking and kidnapping whoever and even some of them it started duplicating and create, recreating itself, but still the DNA was breaking down. It was not genetic perfection like us. So Satan continued to build more bases and more things with the US government and the Nazis. So the Nazis secretly, at another point in time, went back and created the Draconians. The Draconians were based upon more of a alligator and snake reptilian DNA because they needed more of a warrior race mixed with the Nazi viril DNA. So then they got the Draconians. And the Draconians were actually more vicious than the Greys but the Draconians did keep the Greys in check. The thing was the Draconians had a thing for just eating babies. And the Nazis couldn't stop that. So they all still had a plan to make a vessel for Lucifer to walk on earth again through genetic DNA crossbreeding and cloning. It's what a Baphomet is. So, I want you to understand the Greys created something to combat the Draconians because they, they were at war. The Greys created the Gua'uld. The Gua'uld is a parasite, parasitical based organism mixed with reptilian and highly intelligent. 
so the Greys created that, and they took over the universe for a while. And the Greys actually were happy living like this as a Sith host. So then the Draconians, to combat the Gua'ul, created the Borg. The Borg was basically robotic technology that was designed to adapt to anything and to destroy all good and anything that stood against it. So I want you to understand what happened with the, the Sith, how the Sith came about. The Sith and the Borg were fighting and the Borg actually, I'm going to explain it to you exactly what the Borg does. The Borg uses nanotechnology. And the Borg will jump on the back of your neck, because this, this has happened to me. And it will inject you with a little nanomite in the back of your neck, and it goes up your brain stem, and it attaches itself to your pineal gland and then spreads out to your brain and you're, you're gone. You're under their control. It's basically the same thing as the Gua'u, but it's robotic. So I want you to understand that the Borg, when they would attack somebody that had a Gua'u in it, the first thing the Gua'uld would do, if it, if it got attacked by a Borg, it would jump out of the host because then it would become under Borg control. So, now you see what I'm getting at. This is basically what happened. The Borg took over the ghoul because the ghoul wasn't quick enough to jump out of the host. So then with the Borg technology and the Borg mothership controlling all the Borgs started to cipher Gua'u and human minds. This was the birth of the Sith. Now, I want you to understand how diabolical this shit is and how psychopathic all of, them, all of them are. Because they have psychopathic reptilian Nazi DNA in them. And so the Sith is the evolution of a problem trying to combat a problem, trying to combat another problem, and basically they're all evil and warring against each other. Not just us, God's people, but each other for control over us. So the U.S. government doesn't really want you to know about their war amongst themselves. So I want you to understand how the Borg and the Gua'u combine to make the Sith. They are robotic and they're biological now. And they are over the greys. And they are over the draconians, if they still exist. And anything. These things are the most feared things in the universe right now. Now, I'm going to tell you how I got reinfected because I fought off a Borg infection. My mind is very strong and they are obsessed with my mind because I keep creating techniques and things to fight them off. And if I did not, you would not be hearing this right now. That's the honest to God truth. Now, to all you militaries that wear, all you military and cops, US military and cops that wear vipers, magnum boots, they've infected the company. 
They infected me with some really bad nanotechnology through the boots. I traced the technology back to the boots. So if you're a Sith and you know how diabolical they are, how do you control and take over a military? All the military wear magnum boots. I mean, everybody. So a little bit of sweat, that nanotechnology goes into your system and then it's got you. This is the Sith. And also DARPA, NSA, all of those things are being run by the Sith. And for the people that think I'm full of shit, well, you don't even know if you're under control by them. And that's a fact. I mean, we're talking about nano microscopic technology that this is, okay, I'm going to explain the process of what it does. Because I want everybody to understand, and scientists, Russian, French scientists, um, really listen up. First of all, for you martial artists out there, for you people that have really strong willpower like me, this you really need to listen to. Because we are the last stand against them. They sit in your subconscious. The subconscious Sith should be the first and the last part of the Sith to kill. Because the Sith operate now, because I told you, they combine with the Gua'uld and the Borg. That's the Sith. So now you're dealing with both forms of technology. Which, yeah, I know, in the Stargate program, it was very difficult to battle both of them. Well, imagine if both of them fused into one diabolical entity. This is what we're dealing with right now. And the Rothschilds made a treaty with them. The Windsors made a treaty with them to sell them to us. This was about roughly about two and a half, three years ago, around the time when I was in Paris. Because they finally found something in someone that they feared. So I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you, martial artists. I'm going to explain the process of the Sith. They use a subconscious Sith to sit in your subconscious. Now, we all know the subconscious is the core to the spirit. The subconscious is completely and always being hacked by the Sith through TV, through music, through sound, through, through Sith binaural encoding. Everything that you hear, everything that you listen to, if you have a Sith in your system, they are using that sound to communicate with each other. They communicate on the DARPA frequency. The frequency that DARPA uses for brain mapping, that's them. Then they take this frequency, it's the same frequency, DARPA, and they encode it and underline it into everything. So if they need to brain map you and you're walking down the street or through your cell phone, all they got to do is, you know, have somebody that's under control and honk a horn at you. And all horns or all cars are satellite linked up. And especially their, their cars that are Mercedes and Chrysler, those are their cars. VW, BMW, these are all Sith cars now. So these are all cars that are highly outfitted with Sith and Harp technology. I exposed to the Legionnaires about Harp cars over two and a half, three years ago. 
So you guys should be very, very burst on what I'm talking about now. So I want you to understand that the underlining encoding is the same encoding that DARPA uses for brain mapping. So DARPA, you're fucked. You need to release that shit. I'm sure your agents are going to get start getting popped and people are going to fucking kick in your door to get that shit. I can promise you. So the, the brain mapping frequency that DARPA is using that is the same frequency that the Sith use on the underlying encoding because I, I hear it. I hear it whenever they, they're doing it to me. DARPA's brain mapping frequency, which is based on silent sound. This is another reason why Evelyn Rothschild um, crashed the plane in Malaysia. That was another Sith operation because they needed to get that encoding because it was something that represented a danger to them in the future. That's why that um, Malaysian plane was, a, was an op. I'm telling you people, these people are psychotic time travelers going back in time assassinating people. It's what they do. And if you knew how many times the Sith does it, and the Sith thinks they're smart. They'll go in and take somebody over and make sure that they do the things that they need to do and then take them over and get a baby from them and then kill them off. I mean, we're talking about biological, mechanical, psychotic parasites that are built off the Nazi viril, the greys, and the fucking draconians. You can't imagine how sick and demented and psychotic these things are. So, back to the process of the Sith. Subconscious, number one. That's where they sit. Because they're always programming you through movies, through TV, through Wi-Fi. That's their big thing, the subconscious people. Second thing, microchips. Legionnaires, you know what you put in my arm. You know when my arm is broken. They upgraded the fucking thing to be a big microchip and a thing they call, they use um, against me, basically. This thing in my arm, this bar. So I got it under control because I know what they use it for. So that's what they did to me. So I want you to understand the RFID chip, it's very important to them. Because that's also Sith technology, also by DARPA and the US government for mind control. Now, the third thing is the brain. Number three, the pineal gland. Now, doctors, scientists, they bathe and swim in the pineal gland's bloodstream. Not kidding. And how do they do that? They attach themselves to the heart. What is the heart? The heart is life. The heart pumps blood throughout your whole body. The heart has a frequency that can be transmitted around the earth in a matter of seconds. And the heart controls your magnetic field, which they use DARPA to hack into to do brain mapping. So, I want you to understand subconscious, brain, and heart. These are the three places that the Sith sit. If you control these three places within the human body and spiritually and mentally, you can claim and take control of their soul. I mean, the heart. 
You got the blood. You've infected the blood. The subconscious. Need I tell you about MK Ultra and assassin programming and how many altars you program into the subconscious and this all starts with the Kundalini which the Kundalini is or the Kundalini energy the sign for it is the snake wrapped around the spine. So do you want to know how the Sith get their strength? They are addicted to human spinal fluid. They drink it to get strong. They sit in your spinal fluid. So they specifically do this to control mind control assassins to keep them from destroying them. Because if you have strong mental powers, you get an adrenaline boost to boost those powers and the Sith have to control that and to control that flow so they sit also in your adrenal gland in your spine in your spinal fluid they, they love it this is what keeps them strong and I'm not just talking about me I'm talking about everybody so I want you to know I'm not under their control they're attacking me every fucking day, every minute they can. That's why I set up on this street around CIA, NSA, cartel, Mexican cartel agents that think they have the highest government security and they're protected. That's why Cesar Augusta has his lawyer's office directly across the street from my house. This is an op people because they know what I know now you know what I know this is why they have the, the CIA agents across the street from me Mr. GMC with his big west gate at the front of his truck that's the gates of hell that's what they want on earth they flaunt this shit so I want you to understand what I'm telling you is very serious and how I'm in basically a fucking Sith habitat. One of these houses, I don't know which one, they house a Sith queen. Let me tell you about the Sith queen. I'm going to let all your shit out, government. The Sith queen is the mother she births the Siths. She controls them. If there's a specimen that she, she specifically targets, like me, because she's fascinated with my mental capacity, because she wants to control me and to use anything that I use against them and to turn it around and make it evil and give them more power. That's all they do. They don't create anything. They cipher everyone's information and steal from everyone and then they try to corrupt it and make it theirs. That's all the Sith does, in a nutshell. But can you imagine if they're listening and ha jacked into everyone's mind, the greatest minds on earth and the scientists, etc what they could do. So it goes the Sith Queen and her daughters. Those are who sits on the throne of the Sith because the Sith Queen can birth without any male or other input. She can still make her own offspring. Because again, let me remind you, they're digital, robotic, biological parasites. So what the Sith Queen does is to my asshole gatekeeper Mexican handler across the street from me, to the CIA fuckers 
that lived next door to him, Mr. Westgate GMC truck and his real bloodline bitch-ass wife that drives the Nazi red bug. I put her license plates up. So to those two scientists slash witches slash DARPA fucking satanic bitches, they're in direct communication with the queen. I don't know if they have a facility in their house that houses a Sith queen, but she is somewhere near this area. Always is. So, welcome to the truth. Let's see if the U.S. government tries to knock my internet out so I don't put this online. Because this is the truth. So, welcome to the truth, people. This is the shit that the U.S. government doesn't want you to know. And I want you to understand, Project Camelot and all you people listening to that bullshit, let me help you understand why Project Camelot is doing all all the stuff with the super soldiers. And, they're, and they have these idiotic guys, yeah, well, I worked with, with this program and it's the Nazis and the Zionists and, and they're at warring and I work with this project and, oh, I can't say too much. But, but, but they said I can talk, but you know, I guess I'll have to deal with the repercussions when I get back. This is what these assholes always say. So all you dumbasses that are out there listening to Project Camelot and all their bullshit, they're part of it. Project Camelot basically started doing what I'm doing. And they realize that if they don't start letting people know what they're doing, it makes it easier for their future to be wiped out. See... The Nazis thought secrecy and coveting everything is the best way to go. Well, hey guys, it is. Keep it secret. Because the less people that know about your real shit, the easier it is to wipe it out. And it's already started. So the stuff that I'm revealing right now, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to help them. The stuff I'm revealing right now is going to give people a sense of truth, a sense of self-understanding, a sense of self-awareness, and also a sense of, no, you're not fucking crazy. These are the things that they don't want you to have. And when you watch Project Camelot and listen to these assholes talk about these government programs and what they're doing, do they ever offer a solution? Do they ever offer a, a awareness of where are you being attacked exactly, physically, mentally, spiritually? Why is it happening? What is the process? How are they attacking you on a molecular level, on a spiritual level, in your subconscious. And then if they chip you, you can hear that frequency. It takes some time, but the mind is an incredible thing, people. I can promise you that. So all of these other people out there, you know, saying, oh, we're, we're this, we're that, and we're, we're talking about this. All, of the, all they're trying to do is lock down their satanic timeline now. I kid you not. That's all those guys are doing. I mean, if the, in the, especially if they're still with these programs and saying, oh, I'm coming out and talking about it. I mean, you can't see that, people. That shit's obvious. If you're still with these demonic programs and you're doing videos on Project Camelot acting like you're coming out and talking, like Project Camelot um, interviewed the, the fucking bitch from the Rothschilds, which they're the most vile, degenerate fucking humanoid bloodline throughout the universe. Now let me break down Project Camelot. 
why the fuck would you call yourself Project Camelot? Because basically, you know, Camelot basically goes back to the time of inbreeding and in incest. And, you know, the fucking Knights of the Round Table, which really never were worth shit. And also Merlin the Magician, who can eat a fat dick. Seriously. That's Camelot. That European Satanism bullshit. That is the time lock, so to speak, to, to the modern day fucking UK witches. Let's, let's get real, Project Camelot. That's what you are. They don't put anything on there that helps people. Really. I mean, I used to watch it because I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I look at the stuff that I learned from it, and I already knew it. It was just buried. And for you people that know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. You know? When, when they talk about something and you know you already knew it, but you're kind of glad that you have some asshole reconfirming it. So, Project Camelot. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, right, whatever. So, anyway, have a good day. Stay blessed. Walk in the light. Understand the Sith. They're, they're done. They put a queen on me. And notice... To all you feds, I got to say this on tape. Mexican government. Have you guys noticed these fucking cars driving by my house? These motorcycles that have this like digitized sound to them. They don't, they sound, they, it's a car and a motorcycle, but notice they have a digital sound to them. Have you noticed that yet? To the guys that are actually staking out my house hey sis that's your shit and it doesn't sound like other normal cars and motorcycles stupid and you can't fix it you can't fix it they've been trying to fix it for like two days but you know when they did try to fix it their memories got wiped and then they're still doing the same shit <laughs> So, all your cars, Sith, that you drive by my fucking house to inject new encoding into my house and into me because you're so fucking psychopathic, all that shit's being clocked. And don't think that you are the supreme force in the universe. I'm making you the laughing stock of the universe because of all the shit that you've done and all the people that knew about you and fed and fed off or you fed off their fear. I don't fear you. I think you're pathetic. And for the amount of cars you have to drive by my house and have these fucking agents sitting and stalking me and brain mapping me and DARPA and Echelon and Harp and Chemtrails and a big huge car operation. Hey Sith, who the fuck am I, huh? That you gotta do all this shit for me. Ask yourself that question and ask yourself, are you making it more and more obvious? when you think that you're the most secret governmental society on earth? Not to mention your MAVs. Now, check it out, people. <laughs> they have these MAVs that are fake birds, robotical birds. They're directly connected to the queen and Tempest. Tempest is the queen's computer basically. It's her machine used for calculation. Now, the other day, I released 
some information on the MAVs. I'm going to update it because they changed their shit because of the shit that I released and they're fucking pathetic. So I want you to understand witchcraft and numerology. It's very important to them because without it, they're fucked. And this is why you're falling apart, Sith. Because everything that they did, even the at a biological cloning aspect was done at a satanic alchemist level. Even their creation. So getting back to the birds now the birds use the same digital darpa encoding to pass messages into you and into the nano sith technology inside of you or in your subconscious or in your brain it's all the same frequencies so when when the birds that are around me and that go into my air condition and sit on top of my house or chirping like chirp, chirp, or chirp, 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 you know, chirping. Those chirps are messages directly from the queen or tempest, what to do, where to attack me, what to shut down, etc. when they're in my system. So these chirps are based on Alchemy, twos, threes, six, 18. They use these sequences. Now, I revealed this, okay? So I want you to understand within the three chirps, there's highly compressed information, maybe two or three curses, if they want to just compress it in there. So what the birds did after I revealed this is they would take a, instead of going chirp, 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 they would use, now they're using a three range frequency where they go chirp, like that. And if you know that there's this, it's three. And another thing that they still tried to change is to do the chirp and then chirp, 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 chirp to do one chirp and then add five more, which is still six. Or at another um, way, they also tried to change their chirps to avoid detection <laughs> is to do another frequency chirp like chirp and then chirp, 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 chirp which is still a sequence of six. So, I've been listening to them change and adapt their, their, their style, but still trying to maintain on the six and the threes and, and basically, you know, the same demonic frequency because if they change it, it won't work. It's impossible. So, Sith... We got your birds. So, and also, another thing that I didn't say is these operators also can use the birds to communicate. I mean, how I'm talking into a phone right now, they can have one bird jacked into the bird and I'm talking like this and then whatever I'm saying can be transmitted through the bird to another bird and then to another controller. Not kidding. This is their technology. This is the Sith. Are you scared yet? So, U.S. government. I'm going to tell you what I did with Caesar Augusta. I sent him some messages. I told Caesar Augusta he has one day to get me my money or I'm going after his family. 
And how am I going to go after his family? Well, considering that this man just tried to kill me, and he took $70,000 from me, and I'm pretty smart, and his wife is the head of the Cancun's Travel Association for students, and I told him, I said, how is it going to look if your wife gets exposed to having connections to you, which is a cartel member, drug dealer with a trash company, and only on speculation. It needs to be only on speculation. This shit don't have to be proven. But the fact is, she is who she is, and the fact is, I do have pictures with him and two men that aren't cops that are claiming to be cops and they're Mexican cartel hitmen. These are facts. So, so you can speculate all you want, but the truth is, if I had to go in front of Mr. Benito's office and then find out where the front of the Cancun's Student School Association is, your wife is done and she will probably go to jail, Mr. Augusto. Because I sent him a message stating this. And I said, do you know what this would look like? A cartel, suspected cartel member with a wife with the Cancun Travels Association that is supposed to take all their students abroad? Well, I got one question, and I'll say it now. Have any Mexican students come up missing during these trips? If so, is this not a cover for human trafficking through Cesar Augusto's wife? Yeah, I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to go like that all day long. If I need to, if it comes to that. So then I'm going to go after your father. I told him that. You know? I said, I'm going to go after your dad, that's supposedly the doctor. I, and I said, oh, yeah, I did remember you joking about some things and saying maybe this and this. I'm not going to say what he said, <laughs> what I said in the message, because it is just too good. And then I sent him another message. I said, by me using the words cartel, drug dealer, pedophile, human trafficking, <laughs> That puts you on the international watch list, motherfucker. You can't use your phone. <laughs> I said, and how is that kiss of death coming that you put on me, dumbass? <laughs> yeah, I sent Caesar Augusta those messages last night. I'm the wrong person to fuck with. So, targeted individuals. Did I give you some ideas how to deal with gang stalkers if you got their numbers? <laughs> so anyway, I always like to try to leave people on a, on a funny note because this is some serious shit. <laughs> oh, um, anyway, don't be scared of these motherfuckers. They are so scared of the truth and all of these people that are out there saying yeah I'm a truther yeah I was this yeah I was that most of the time they ain't shit I mean Jesse Ventura is is the biggest example Alex fucking Jones another big example and David Icke I just saw an article uh, okay and if you don't believe me go to my website I'm gonna repost that shit about David Icke and they're showing, they show like 10 pictures of him shaking hands with people and he's giving them the Freemason handshake. David Icke is a fucking reptilian antagonist. He doesn't tell you shit. He's just like, Queen of England's a reptile. Reptile this and the reptiles. It. I mean, him and Alex Jones. I mean, they have all these people listening to him. They have big shows, but what the fuck have they done? Where are the results? For all you people that are listening to Alex Jones that think he woke you up, 
Where are the results? What what have you learned how to do other than to buy his bullshit products, which are probably poisoned with Sith shit? Hmm? So anyway, I'm not going to even get into the Laurel Aston story about how Alex Jones, you know, basically set her up when uh, she went to Alex Jones for help and how she ended up having a broken leg. So anyway, people, walk in the light and, you know, look for the truth because if a motherfucker's out there like with Project Camelot or Alex Jones or or all of these assholes, what was it, what's the UK guy's name that's coming out now trying to be like the truth guru, you know? And he was a fucking handler. I forget his name. I don't even give a shit about his name. He has a beard and, and brown hair. It's total fucking shills. So anyway, thank you for you people that support me. We're just a handful, but honestly, that's all we need. You need a handful of people to affect the consciousness of the earth. Seriously. Once you know what's going on, it just takes a handful of people. It doesn't take masses. They need masses because they're stupid. Peace. Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. Fuck them shoes. Fuck those socks with the bell on it. Fuck your gay ass fairy faggot accent. Fuck them cheap ass cigars. Fuck your yuck mouth teeth. Fuck your hair piece. Fuck your chocolate. Fuck Guy Ritchie. Fuck Prince William. Fuck the Queen. This is America. But my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on Fuck them shoes Fuck those socks with the bell on it Fuck your gay ass fairy faggot accent Fuck them cheap ass cigars Fuck your yuck mouth teeth Fuck your hair piece Fuck your chocolate Fuck Guy Ritchie Fuck Prince William Fuck the Queen This is America But my Lambo is blue nigga Now get the fuck out my hotel room And if I see you in the street I'm slapping the shit out of you